All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. First time in Berlin, first time to Buzzwords. Uh, I regret not having made it here uh, long ago. I've been on the program committee, as he said, before. Um, and um, also, I'm a Lucene Solar Committer and a co-founder of LucidWorks, which is uh, the platinum sponsor of this event. So um, I'm going to do a talk called Chatting with Solar. Um, it is not Will Hayes' talk, and I'll go into that in just a second. Um, but first, I want to give you a word from our sponsor. Um, again, not Will Hayes' talk. His talk title was Building and Scaling a High-Performing de Development Team. Um, he couldn't make uh, it to Berlin um, this week, so he commissioned me to, uh, to fill in, and, and I couldn't give his talk because I can't put words into, uh, put my words to his intelligent thoughts there. So um, I made up my own talk over the last couple of days when I learned I needed to do this. Um, and my take on his title there, Building and Scaling a High-Performing Development Team, is that we do that with folks like you, folks that are passionate, smart, caring, and diverse. Um, and absolutely with open source, we're Lucene Solar, Spark, Zookeeper, and the whole stack of that, those technologies. We are absolutely hiring. We're in a very uh, strong growth uh, period right now. Um, I kind of riffed off of Will's... Um, text here, he said his, he proposed a fun, non-technical talk uh, for members of development teams at all levels looking to increase performance and productivity. I kind of riffed off of that and uh, came up with my uh, own little uh, blurb there in a second, and I'll show you that. Um, come visit our booth. We have a booth right there in the lobby, um, and we're giving away these autocomplete t-shirts. Um, they're nice and soft and fun, and uh, the ladies really like them, actually. So um, good stuff. So you auto-complete us is what I'm riffing on there and uh, saying that we'd love to talk further um, and um, about your involvement with open source, with your involvement uh, and interest in uh, Lucid Works. All right. So just kind of a riff off of what Will put in his abstract there. This is hopefully going to be a fun technical talk. Um, for development teams at all levels looking to increase the relevancy and value in their search systems and data pipelines using solar. This is a link that I saw this morning. Um, I, I have unfortunately had to stay at the booth uh, this entire conference and the rest of the day after this talk. Um, so I haven't been able to see the talks here, but uh, you know I've see, I follow the tweets and, there, and the agenda, and there's a lot of talks about chat. Um, and this is an article about how Bank of America has a system called Erica that is a uh, chat interface to get at banking information. So there's, there's that. Um, so without further ado, um, we're just going to go back to the talk. I'm going to take off this corporate shirt here and get back to being a developer, okay? So um, now we're gonna get technical about this stuff. Okay, so chatting with solar. The idea is here was um, to build something that could respond back to utterances with a reasonable response. Um, and um, we're gonna use a tool called the solar text tagger to be a part of the, and a very important and powerful part of, of the system to, to do that. So for a while, I'm going to talk about the solar text tagger, which is a unique feature to solar, um, and then go into a demonstration of the tagger, and then talk about um, the, the chat system that I built and how it leverages the tagger. Okay, that's going to be the talk agenda there. Um, I'm not going to read all this. This is actually just a copy and paste from that link right there. I just wanted to put it out there so that it's in the slides. Um, the solar tagger is a high-performance um, entity, naive entity recognizer. And it does that by you inputting the entities that you want to be recognized, and then you hit an endpoint into uh, solar that tags that with the entities that it knows of. It's a very straightforward tool. Uh, the output is very sensible. The cleverness comes in what you do with this. So you can do a lot of things with the tagger. 
And of course, this is, is about doing chat, but we're going to talk about a few um, different use cases there. So um, just to kind of give you a, a, a grounding of the basics of the tagger, um, again, we tag concrete known text string entities. Um, tags are actually documents. They're, they're full-fledged individual documents uh, in a solar collection. Uh, there's a couple of special things about that solar collection to leverage the tagger. There is a field type uh, a change that you need to make. You need to make sure that you have this catenate uh, graph filter factory um, at the end of your analysis chain, the index analysis chain. Um, so there's kind of some specialized stuff. Look at the documentation for the tagger to see what it, what, how it leverages analysis at query time and uh, index time there. And then there's a specialized endpoint that's not automatically registered in the default uh, uh, solar um, configuration. Um, it's a simple uh, JSON API to um, enable that tag request handler. And those are the only two pieces that you need to light solar up uh, to leverage this text tagger. What can you use this text tagger for? You can use it at index time as a preprocessor to take the full text of a document run it through the text tagger, grab the known entities that are in the full text document, people with names, places, um, other entities that you may want to recognize that, that, that are uh, strings that you can match on. It will give you back the offsets and the tags there. And then at index time, you can peel those values away and put them into additional fields for faceting and, of course, navigation. Um, so very useful there. Rudimentary um, in terms of the actual effect, but very powerful in that it's very performant and you can have millions of entities um, in a very high performance manner. At query time, the tagger can be leveraged for some very clever things. Um, use the tags to improve relevancy. And how do you do that? You peel away uh, things that you know about, if you know about the colors and you are a shopping site, a shoe shopping site, and someone searches for blue shoes, you recognize blue as a color, and so now you have a very uh, specific fielded way to either boost by things that are blue or to filter by things that are blue. So you can very easily leverage the text tagger to give you straightforward information like that that can be leveraged to improve relevancy. And a, a straightforward, uh, simple trick like this really, really can improve relevancy. So um, uh, very powerful uh, technique there. Um, so I'm going to show you, the demo is going to build upon uh, on those sorts of things. Here's an example of tagging the text buzzwords in Berlin. And this is just a uh, screenshot from Postman doing a post to the slash tag endpoint. And I'm saying, here's the text. Um, what tags do you know about? And the only data that I have in my tagger collection uh, in this example were cities. I have a database of, um, or I have a text file of uh, all of the cities in the world that have a population greater than 15,000 is the data that I'm using in here, which is about 124,000 cities, I believe. Um, and there's a number of cities named Berlin, actually. But um, in this case, um, it picked out a city, Berlin, and um, it told me, and, and I'll go into this a little bit more detailed, you see the fields that are being returned there, type, name, and ID, Name is the very specific field that I'm using as the tagger strings. And then I, because it's a solar collection, I can put in any other fields that I want onto those documents. Uh, you have one specialized field. You could actually have multiple fields that are uh, used for tagging. Um, but generally, you'd have one field that's used for tagging. And then the rest are just free form whatever field types and, uh, that you need uh, to leverage this information. And one very valuable piece of information in this kind of custom collection here is just a field, a string field called type. This gives us some meta information about what type of thing um, we are tagging. In this case, I only have cities in there, but 
in another example I'm going to show you, I've got colors and brands and cities in there. So um, it disambiguates what type of thing you're talking about. And that's just a custom or a, uh, nothing to do with the tagger. It just happens to do with solar and fields in this case for the, for the type field. The tagger parameters that are being used in that last example are these. Um, when you tag text, you could have overlapping tags. For example, there is a uh, brand uh, of product called white linen. White is a color, but lin white linen is a brand. So if you tag that with a tagger collection that knew about colors and brands, what do you want to get back out of that? You can get back both of those, or you can get back the maximal um, uh, tag span there, so it would only give you back white linen as a brand rather than white as a color. Um, again, you could get them all back if you want or kind of take the bigger, the bigger uh, sets of tags that are non-overlapping. So it's up to you how many tags you want back and whether you want them overlapping and so on. So um, again, you can, and you can limit the number of tags. Um, the other uh, tagger special um, parameter is that match text. And that simply gives you back the text that was matched, um, rather than you having to do the math yourself client side and take the offsets and grab the text yourself. It just automatically does that. Um, beyond that, it supports standard solar um, um, FQ as well as the FL parameter. So you can pick which fields you want back from, the tag, from tags. Um, and you can also narrow down the types of things that you are um, going to tag in the text. So if you have cities and colors and brands, I could say, I'm going to take this text string and only tell me about the cities that are in it, no matter. And, and so I, I FQ type colon city. This also comes in handy when the data, for example, cities have a lat long on them, so they uh, have a location. And so I can FQ and say, only give me cities within a certain radius of a known point, perhaps the point that I'm at right now. Find me food in Berlin. Which Berlin? Out of the dozen of so cities in the world with the word Berlin in their name, which one? Well, you know where I'm at from my mobile app. Let's narrow it down and now, straightforward, there's only one city that's going to get tagged. So that's the parameters for the tagger. Let's kind of go look at it from a, a big perspective here. The tagger is just a tool. It's just a screwdriver or a hammer. Um, you can do lots with it. It's what you do with it in combination with other things that makes it valuable in your application. So just tagging text is a great parlor trick. It's not useful in and of itself. You need to combine this with other techniques. So for example, the text tagger text tags known strings. It's not going to pick out years or um, dates out of full text, unless you had them as tags, which would be kind of a ridiculous thing to do. So you would use this in conjunction with other techniques that are going to uh, understand the text. So you could use regular expressions to pull out four-digit numbers or email addresses or URLs or things of that nature. Um, the text tagger is not the tool for that. So again, it, it works in conjunction with those things. Uh, and the types of things that you're going to use in conjunction with, the context of the query, all of the other um, things that you know about the user and the parameters that are coming in on the query and so on. So um, you need to leverage that as well as ultimately natural language processing uh, if that's the, the goal of your um, use case there. So uh, again, just one piece of the puzzle, but a very powerful, useful piece of it. You need a hammer, um, but it's not the only tool in your toolbox. The tagger collection, while it is tagging known things, you can build that collection any which way you like. In my case, I'm building it from a static data file of cities. Um, in other cases, you could use machine learning to populate 
the tagger collection with things such as head and tail analysis and other query rewrites. Our own platform, LucidWorks Fusion, leverages the text tagger in a very big way right now in the, as a first stage in the query pipeline. Um, and in that stage, we are tagging things that we have learned from the usage of the system. So misspellings, um, head and tail analysis, and other types of query rewrite rules that are in there. So um, again, that's kind of a clever use of the tagger um, within a tool chain. Everybody OK so far? OK. So tagger in perspective, let me just show you kind of the end goal of well, actually, let me uh, take a quick look at my slides here and make sure. Let me, let me pause right there and bounce to a demo of the tagger so that you can see just the tagger itself in action. Um, I've got Postman fired up right here. Um, I can send that same text. So this is Berlin buzzwords here, or buzzwords in Berlin. And... Um, it matched the word Berlin in offsets 13 to 19. And I have that match text turned on. So it actually told me that was Berlin. I could have computed that by using those offsets into this text. Um, but it's just a convenience to get that back. And I get back a standard solar result set, actually. It's not relevancy ranked. There's no scoring in what you get back. You're just getting all of the tags up to the tags limit. That, that are in that text. Um, and it's not in any you know, particular order there other than it's just all of them. So um, now it's off to the races. What do you do with this? Well, let's see. Um, let me show you my uh, tagger demo. Here's the documentation, actually. First things first. The documentation, and I want to point this out because this is an example of very, very well done open source contribution. Um, a committer for the solar project, David Smiley, uh, created the solar text tagger and then contributed it to solar. And um, he wrote a very nice tutorial about it and it just works right out of the box. You fire up solar as is and you run through this tutorial with geo names, which is kind of what I based my thing on with a couple of additional fields, um, where you create a collection geo names, you run that configuration. Like I said, you need this cat catenate uh, graph filter in there, and then you need the tag um, request tagger request handler there. So you can see it got registered uh, as an endpoint slash tag. And that's the tagger the configuration. Now load data. Now do queries and tags. So you can see tag New York City, and there it is. So um, just wanted to point that out because it's a very nice way to understand and have the tagger right there uh, with um, uh, you know, a fairly large amount of, um, of cities there, um, easily um, taggable. Um, let's see. OK, so tagger demo. Let's see, I probably ought to boost this up a little bit here. I did a meetup tour uh, a couple of months ago, and this is the demo I did for the meetup tour, and one of the stops was in San Francisco, so that's why the demo is tailored for that. Um, but I could easily say sushi in Berlin, and it recognized Berlin as a city, but you can see how many Berlins there actually are um, in there. And you can see where they are. So this is the Germany one and so on, all the different Berlins. This is the one in Wisconsin, I believe it is. Um, I don't output which state it's in. Um, so you can see, actually, there's a number of Berlins in the US, um, actually. Um, all right, so that's a, a quick view of this thing. So I could do, um, San, let me go back to this one, because it kind of points out that um, what I can do with that FQ clause uh, with the tagger and limit um, which entities I'm going to tag. And in this particular case, the term San Francisco, there's a whole lot of cities named San Francisco out there, a lot. 42 of them is what it's matching right now. That doesn't really help me find sushi because sushi in San Francisco, Costa Rica is not going to get there in time. So. Um, 
I have this checkbox here. When I check this checkbox, it adds an FQ clause that limits it to the lat long of our headquarters in downtown San Francisco. So when I do that, and it limits it to within 10 kilometers of this uh, point, this latitude longitude, and now I only get one San Francisco. Okay, so that's the magic of adding an FQ to the tagger, to give some context to what you're tagging. In this particular collection that I have, I'm going to show you two demos. They're two separate solar uh, collections. Um, I have some other entities in here. I have a couple of colors in there. I have that white linen brand in there, and then I have cities. So uh, blue is a color, white is a color. Uh, I don't have red in there, just blue and white. But white linen is a brand. So what we can see down here is I used the parameter to um, only tag, um, pull the no um, sub tags. So I don't get white as a color, I only get it as a brand because it's white and then white linen and it uh, removed inner tags and said you just really want the outer ones. Um, so I just get brand. So I get brand white linen and I get color blue. Now I could say white linen in Berlin. So why did it... Uh, and Oh, I see. I still have this tag, so I can't tag cities that are there. Okay, sorry. So let me go back to Berlin. All right. So I can tag three different types of entities there. And you can see I'm still getting a, a lot of Berlins, um, but I have the, the UI just highlights that that is a tag. Okay, so that's the tagger in a nutshell, um, what, it can, what it can do. Going to go back to the slides. All right, so basic tagger. Next up is how to use this tagger within a chat application. I created this silly thing called Lou. Lucid works, Lou, right? Um, so, hey Lou, who are you? And I have a grammar document that responds with, I'm Lou from Lucidworks. Um, those other bullet points there are the demo that I'm going to do as well. So I have those uh, supported in, in, in the system as well. Um, here's what Lou does. Lou tags and replaces things. I called it things. People call it entities. Same thing. Um, of, I tag things mentioned in the utterance and it gives me back basic information, the ID and the type and the name. I'm not so concerned about the ID in this case. Really, the type and the name are important here, um, especially the type. So, um, and again, like I mentioned, in this tagger collection, you can put in additional fields that are useful to you, and type happens to be one of these. The tagger itself doesn't know anything about a type field. That's just a construct that I made for this. Um, there's two collections. There's the things collection and there's the grammar collection. The grammar collection is just a straight up default solar collection. Nothing specialized in there at this point. Um, and that contains utterances that I support, that Lou supports. And it does it in a slotted way such that I don't have an grammar item that says, where is Berlin? I have a grammar item that says, where is city? So when I tag, where is Berlin? I replace that through some processing in the query pipeline with where is city, use that to query the grammar collection. And now I have a match on that slotted or templated utterance. And then I leverage that. Uh, the fields in that document tell me, tell Lou what 
to do with the, the grammar match. So where is Berlin, is where is city is attached to an action that says plot that city by lat long onto open street maps. And so we'll see that in a moment. And this describes what I just said. I should have gone to the slide earlier. So where is Berlin? The tagger comes along and says, where is Berlin? And that comes back with basically the, the JSON looking stuff there. Um, and then in my grammar, I have where is city? So you can see type city there. Again, just substituted that in there and looked at, and then I render a map. Makes sense? So the next thing I want to point out here before we really demo the, the Lou system is that tags, this tagger is an immensely valuable feature in a broad ecosystem of search applications. And we have embedded the solar tagger into LucidWorks Fusion as a first pass in the query pipeline. As such, what it does is tags things that have been machine learned from underperforming queries with query rewriting with misspellings that have been detected with, we have Spark jobs that detect misspellings in the query logs, phrase detection, and synonym detection. All of those get machine learned through Spark jobs written to a rewrite collection, which is a tagger collection. And then at query time, this is what the default query pipeline and Fusion looks like. And the very first stage in our latest versions is that text tagger stage. That text tagger stage is built to tag the Q parameter. And you can control which of the machine learned pieces that you want to bring into the mix um, further down the query pipeline. And it will use those to replace the query as it goes through. OK. So now is query time for Lou. So let's take a look at Lou. And I, uh, sorry, I should refresh this. We'll get to that colorful thing in a minute. Um, I know that I'm going to have additional time, and I and prepared to kind of drill down into the inner workings of this thing. So I'm going to show you this um, kind of methodically, and then we'll take it from there and see um, how much more we break down um, what, what makes this thing tick. OK, so um, I can type into this box, but I have all of these uh, items over here that I can just click on as if I typed it. So I can say, hey, uh, Lou. Uh, what time, time, this is why I'm not going to type them all. Time is it. OK. So that utterance went to Fusion's query pipeline, a custom query pipeline that I developed, that hits the tagger. In this particular case, there's nothing to tag because none of the, utterance, uh, none of the words or phrases in this text are in the tagger collection. So it tagged nothing. However, I do have in my grammar collection an utterance called what time, that says, what time is it? Again, I strip off, hey, Lou. That's just kind of the prefix there. So if, that, if that's in the front, it, it's stripped off. And I, so I have a grammar that says, what time is it? And the action of that is to client side get the time and display it. OK. So what I'm going to do. Just gonna refresh the browser here. So I have I I, I built this la late last night to um, set a, an alert um, at some point. So what I can do is I click this one, and again it's just like I typed it. Hey Lou, remind me soon to wrap up this demo. What that actually did was set a JavaScript timer in the browser, and an alert will pop up in five minutes, um, and you know let us know that we should uh, move on to something else here. Um, so we've got that. We did the what time is it. 
Hey Lou, who are you? I, I just hard coded some silly things in there. Nothing is tagged in that utterance either. It's just a simple grammar uh, match there. Hey Lou, where are you? Again, nothing is gonna get tagged in that one. Um, I just have kind of a hard coded grammar. Where are you? Um, where is Berlin? And the zoom level is a little bit, um, is a little bit uh, low here, but it, it, the lat long of Berlin is there. Now, I, my, my UI, I'm not a UI developer, so it's not pretty, just functional. Um, but I tag, I, I, I list out at, as I'm doing this, I collect in the browser all of the things or all of the entities that have ever been uttered in that session. So uh, City Berlin, I can click on that and actually you know, get, that, get that back over here as well. Um, where is Berlin? We did that one. Okay, so now what is the population of Berlin? Also in that city's data that I have is population information. So just like pulling out the lat long, I pull out the population there. I don't know how dated this information is. I'm sure it's um, some years old, that data file. Um, I happen to live in Charlottesville, Virginia, so I can do that, much smaller town. Um, so I have access in the response there, all of the fields that are in that document that was put in the tag collection. So um, in the cities, again, populations there, there's, there's zip code, lat long, um, not zip code, sorry. Um, country, state. Uh, so there's, a, there's a, a number of fields that are there that are useful. Um, okay, so that's where the tagger came in. Again, I can, uh, you know, I can click on this entity. We, we mentioned that one. And that's you know, lovely Charlottesville, Virginia. And um, let's see, what else? Um, because I'm tagging things that are in my collection there, one of the things that I can do is inject additional tags. And what I did in Fusion was create a data source that indexed the names of the data sources available. So in Fusion, we have a concept of data sources. Let's we'll see if I can kind of pop over there to that. And um, let's see. One second, I should have primed this up here. So the... Um, things collection. So the data sources that are available in my things collection are cities, data sources, and demo entities. So if I run my data sources data source, it populates the tagger collection with the names of the data sources. And one of the data sources is called cities. So what I can do here is learn cities. And what that did was hit the Fusion API and started that data source to, in this case, re-index the city's data. So I could have other entities that are sitting there off the side that aren't learned yet, and then learn those, and they would kick those jobs off. So the data source cities uh, document looks like this. So there's nothing in there other than it's of type data source, and it has a string called cities that we recognize. So very simple there, but because I know that it's a data source, um, I can start it, right? So that type is a very special field in this case. And finally, um, last year I kind of, I, I don't know what kind of motivated me, but I love this game set. Do you know the game set, um, the pattern matching game? Um, and I thought it would be fun to kind of build a JavaScript version of that just to kind of play around. So I built that. It's, it's open source on my GitHub, my personal GitHub, and I embedded it in here so I can say, hey, Lou, play set, and it pops the board up in there. And so um, I don't know. Does anybody see a set already in there? There should be. There's five sets in there. I, I don't really see them that quickly. Um... One, two, three, I don't know. Well, I, I can't think while I'm up here talking, but there's five sets in, this, in that thing that have the right match there. So you can play the little game through here. So just a cute little Easter egg I put in there. All right. 
So I've been given the five minute alert, so we got a, just a couple of more minutes here. Um, I wrote a blog on the tagger as well about the, the kinds of things that you just saw, and that is this right here. So um, using the solar tagger for improving relevancy, and I go through the stuff that you just saw, I point at David Smiley's awesome presentation that details the gory uh, um, Lucene magic using finite state transducers and uh, kind of the, the term magic uh, and that catenate graph filter and all that. He so it goes very detailed into that. Um, and then I just go through the same thing of tagging cities and then you can pull um, the color blue off and boost or filter by blue if somebody searches for blue shoes, right? So now you've got better relevancy based off of that. Um, so there's that. And let me just show you this one real quick. So our chief algorithms officer, Trey Granger, um, took where I was with this tagger and thought of something even above and beyond thinking that I had about this stuff, and he created commands that were tags and used the semantic knowledge graph, which is another very special feature of solar, and put all of that stuff together. And when you say, and Haystack was a conference where he presented this, so Haystack in Charlottesville, Virginia, um, which is in his tagger parlance is an event that is tied to a venue that is tied to a location. So you have to, he used the graph parser to navigate from venue to, uh, for event to venue to location, and then use the, the tagger to tag near to get the command. That means that you're gonna do uh, um, a geo-centric uh, uh, query there. And he used the semantic knowledge graph for the pieces that were left over so that barbecue, BBQ, expands to meaning things that are restaurants that, and the terms from the semantic knowledge graph are BBQ, ribs, brisket, pork, and type restaurant. So all of that with a couple of pieces of technology from solar. So in conclusion, and I have a pointer there to Trey's stuff. So please go visit that. I'm very impressed by this. I'm gonna start building stuff on top of the way he's doing it now, um, seeing this cleverness. So in conclusion, the solar tagger provides known entity tagging of text. It's very fast, even on large text. It's a great first stage. I, I would dare say a necessary first stage in most scenarios that provides valuable metadata and matching there um, that can be leveraged to enhance query interpretation and result relevancy. And it's useful in an index pipeline preprocessor to extract known entities and peel those away so that you have uh, known things as facets or navigation. All right, so that's the conclusion of the Tagger talk. While I have your attention, I will invite you to our happy hour tonight. Uh, I don't know Berlin, but apparently this is only like an eight minute walk from here. Um, so please join us tonight um, for some beer. And there's that. Um, let's see. Also, I want to remind you, visit our booth, get a free t-shirt. We do not want to carry these things home. We would love for you to carry it home yourself. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm happy to take questions if there's time, sure. Um, s since we have run out of time, maybe one or two questions if you have any. Any questions? Um, so you mentioned indexing like in real time, right? When you can just trigger this endpoint for cities. Um, if you have a big collection of those whatever entities or things that you're having, um, does it also influence performance of your other requests or is it like just forking somewhere in the background? What is the cost of running that for a big collection? Um, the text tagger is extremely fast, so um, it's not a performance bottleneck in that case. If, it, even having a lot of tags is not a problem based off of the data structure the way the, and you can look at David Smiley's thing to see how it does, it does its magic. Um, so I would not 
say that there's going to be you're going to encounter any issues. One of the interesting things about the tagger collection is that because the documents are generally small, you could create a very large tagger collection, millions and millions of documents that that readily fit in a single core, single node, a single shard scenario. And so one of the best practices that comes out of this is that um, because you're going to be running your text tagger a lot is to replicate that tagger collection to all your nodes so that they're just right there um, 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 handy rather than having it just uh, on a single node. OK. Um, with that, we come to the end of this session. We thank you so very much for, for having joined us. And we thank you for thank you. speaking. Thank you.